Hey everyone, Brian here with a couple of premier tricks for you to try out. The first trick I have for you is metadata. Now, down here in our project panel, which I'm going to expand, you can see we have our columns full of metadata. This is what Premiere gives us by default, but did you know you can actually change these columns into something else? So what you want to do is you want to come up here, right click or control click, and choose metadata display. Now in here, you can go through these different menus and choose the metadata that you want, but the one that I'm most interested in today is called usage. Specifically, video usage and audio usage. Let me check those both on and click OK. Now by default, Premiere is going to drop those two columns over here on the right hand side, so I'm going to move them over much closer to my file names. It doesn't appear that anything is happening yet, but if I were to expand my footage bin and expand my B-roll, I can see that one of my clips has a little one next to it. That number indicates that this clip was used in a timeline somewhere in my project. Let me just collapse this panel. Now here's my timeline, and this is just a small sample of a timeline. So your general timelines might be a lot larger looking than this, and that's where this really comes into handy. If I were to come over to this little one here, click it, and then choose one of the items in this drop down list. By clicking on it, it will take me to that very point in the timeline where this item lives. It's a really handy trick when you have a ton of timelines or a really large timeline and you have to find a specific clip in there. My next trick for you is saving your column layout for your project panel. So if I were to expand this again, I had to move these two usage columns over from the right hand side to the left hand side. And while that's totally fine to do, it can be very annoying every time I want to turn them on and move them over. What you can do instead is save a view preset of your metadata columns in your bin. You come up to the hamburger menu here, choose Save as New View Preset, give it a name, and click OK. Let me show you my layout for when I'm typically doing some editing. I'm going to come over to the hamburger menu here, choose Restore View Preset, and choose Usage Slim. This just gives me a couple of columns that I need to look at regularly while I'm working, and video and audio usage are a big part of that. But I can also recall other views that I might need. For example, if I had to check to see if any proxy files were attached to my clips, I have a view preset just for that. Under Restore View Preset, I'll choose Proxy. These files don't have any proxies, so I know that we're all good and I don't have any proxy files to pay attention to here. Let's go back to our timeline for a second, and you can see that we're parked on this video here. Now, this is a dreaded vertical video. I'm sure we've all had to deal with this at some point in our recent careers. And you probably even had to do this. You take the vertical video, you duplicate a copy on top, then on the bottom, you come to your effects here, you type in Gaussian Blur, and then you take the bottom copy, come over to your effects controls, increase the scale, to fit the width of your video screen, then increase the blur amount, something like this. You might also go so far as to add a brightness and contrast, place it on there as well, and then lower the brightness. Now this isn't very hard to do, but if you had to do it a lot, it could be very time consuming. So let me show you a little trick to make this workflow a little bit faster. So once you have dialed in all of your effects, I'm going to add one more effect to this stack. It's going to be called Transform. And I'll grab that from the Distort menu here, drop it on. I'm going to set my scale back to 100, and come down to the Transform effect and increase the scale there to something like 350. Now I have all of my effects set up. I have my Gaussian Blur, I have my Brightness and Contrast, and I have my Transform. I can select all three of these, right click, and say Save Preset. I'm going to call this Gaussian Blur and Scale Preset, and click OK. Now let me just delete this clip from the timeline for a second, and recreate the same setup. I'm going to have two of these clips. The bottom one will be modified with my effects. Come over to my effects panel, drop down the presets, 
and choose my Gaussian Blur and Scale preset and drag it on. And all of my effects are back on that clip, including the scaling without having to do a manual scale adjustment. Now another trick I want to show you is a way to edit in Premiere sort of like you can edit in Avid. Now if you don't know Avid, that's totally okay. This trick will still be very handy for you. But for those Avid editors looking for a way to work in the Avid style, this is going to really excite you. So I have here a sequence of selects that I've pulled. I have a bunch of B-roll and I've lifted the selects that I like. Alternatively, I could have used markers to indicate which parts of the shots I like best. So I'm going to close up my selects sequence here. I'm going to come down to my bin where I have my selects sequence. I'm going to drag it up into the source monitor. From the source monitor, I'm going to use the wrench menu and choose open sequence and timeline. This will reload the selects sequence, but this time it's indicating that it's coming from the source monitor. When I click through this sequence here, I'm actually moving the playhead in the source monitor. If I return to my main sequence, put my playhead in the back where I want to cut in some footage, what I can do is on the top left of the timeline, I can uncheck this button here which says insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips. By unchecking it, you can see that my track targeting has changed to show me the number of tracks in my source sequence that will be cut into my main timeline. Now I can hop back and forth between my main editing sequence and my selects. I can do that with a shortcut key. By default, Premiere sets the shortcut key to focus on the timeline as Shift 3, but you can modify it to whatever you want. So just like an Avid, I can use a single shortcut key to hop back and forth between the source and record timelines. In the source timeline, I'll find some new footage, like this shot right here. I'll set an endpoint. I'll go to the end of the good part and set an out point. I'll toggle back to my main sequence and I'll go ahead and cut it in with my overwrite shortcut key. There we go. I've cut in the footage from my select sequence into my editing sequence. This also works for cutting in between two clips. For example, if I want to overwrite this clip of people partying with something from my select sequence, let me find something else in here, like this shot. Is pretty good. I'll set an endpoint and only an endpoint. I'll switch back to my editing sequence and I'll set an endpoint and then go to the end of this shot and set an out point. I'll use my overwrite shortcut key and that will cut in the footage from my selects sequence into my editing sequence, overwriting what was there. This is very similar to pancake editing. In fact, you could even take this select sequence, click it, and drag it to stack on top of your editing sequence if you like the pancake editing method of working. My last trick for you is a way to share your Premiere project with collaborators really easily. Let's just say, for example, that you have a sequence of clips that the client selected that they liked the best. For example, all these shots of horses. And you've gone ahead and lifted the parts of the shots that are the best. You may have a collaborator, either in your company or another freelancer who's working with you on the same client, who might need access to this sequence of selects. However, you're working on a huge project with tons of sequences, and you don't want them to have to sift through your bins to find what they need. Here's what you can do. You can select this sequence in your bin. It's called Selects Horses. Come up to the File menu and choose Export. Selection as Premiere Project. Now I just saved that to a folder. I'm going to go ahead and open up that project. Now you can see that I have a brand new project open here. It's my Selects Horses. And in there I have my Sequences bin. And I have my Footage bin, which only includes the footage that exists in the sequence that we saved as its own project. Now I can just give this single project file to my collaborator, and they'll have everything they need to get going on this select sequence. That's all I have for you for Premiere Tips and Tricks. I hope you have a chance to go exploring these ideas and even find some new things of your own that help you level up your workflows.